Hey fellow tennis nerds, I hope all is well. Slightly different at home video today. Thanks to all of you who are giving good comments about the podcast. It's something I really love to do. I really love talking to people in general. And I'm happy to see the reception talking to guys like Nikola Racic from Intuitive Tennis, Karu from My Tennis HQ. I did it with Rick Macy. More stuff to come. Uh, I will have some interesting guests in the future. I also appreciate that you like and watch the videos I do when I go to tournaments, the vlogs. I'm going to improve that because I'm not really that good with the camera or all the technical stuff, maybe the editing. There are guys that are better at that. I might get someone to help me in the future if money allows, but uh, for now you'll have to do with me. But I'm gonna go to a lot of tournaments this summer. It's gonna be pretty intense. I'm gonna try that at least one year. I usually go to some tournaments and I've been going to a lot of tennis over the years, being such a tennis nerd, being involved in kind of sponsoring tennis with companies I worked for and so on. I always try to get back to tennis, love the sport. That's why I started this whole thing. I didn't expect it to be like what it is today, but it is. Uh, but I'm happy that it's been a journey and I can do this full time now. So just got back from Paris. Uh, fantastic to watch the French Open. Please watch my vlog. Thanks to Tennis Warehouse Europe and Adidas for inviting me. Also spent some time with Head at their brand launch event of their campaign, Your Game is Our Game, which is more about like loving also puddle and pickleball and getting everything together and, and uniting around sports, which I think is a good message. Uh, so, been pretty intense, two times Paris, I will now go to Stuttgart to watch the Boss Open, previously called the Mercedes Cup, it's a great event, I go almost every year, I've been there many many times, I love the surroundings, grass court tennis can be pretty exciting, uh, food there is good, everything is pretty much well done, well, well arranged, so I go there and then I will fly after that back to Spain, we'll then go to Mallorca for the Mallorca Open it looks like as well, First time going to that tournament. I've been to the club before. The club is spectacular. I played on the grass. There are videos for you to watch uh, with me testing the grass and their different courts. We actually played on three different surfaces in a short period of time. So that's also to come. And then I will go to Sweden later in the summer to Båstad, the Swedish Open, and try to get some interesting insights, interviews, whatever I can get my hands on. Sometimes it's tough with the players. I will have press credentials to some of these events, but these kind of um, interviews that you do in the press conference, they're pretty dry, pretty boring. And I get the players why they're not so comfortable with that kind of stuff, because it's like you get stupid questions and it's the same question over and over again. I will try my best to give more insightful questions or maybe questions that you would like to know. So if you have ideas for questions you want me to ask to players, to organizers, to the ATP, WTA, whatever, let me know in the comments. I most of all want tennis to grow and tennis to be an exciting sport for young generations to come. So I want to talk about that topic with different actors around tennis world, whether it's players, organizers, you know, ATP staff, or most importantly, the tennis fans, because, you know, there's a feeling that the tennis fans, it, we're getting older, right? So we need to get younger people in. Maybe it's not such a big issue right now as we are making it out to be. But if you look at statistics, it, it seems like the age of a tennis fan is definitely not going down in age, it's actually going upward. So we definitely need the young generation to also watch tennis. I also want to know what you want to see on this channel. There will be more podcasts, as I said. I also have a clips channel that will make a bit more active, upload podcast clips, other types of clips. So please subscribe to that one as well. And if you're not subscribed to this channel, please do. The heart of the Tennis Nerd operation from the beginning was the website. So you know, we'll keep working with that. Hopefully, if you want to write something interesting for the website, reach out to me via Instagram. There should be a contact us form on the website and so on. That website has been around for like over 10 years and I, it's kind of the baby of mine. So, uh, you know, I want to keep working on the website as well, not only do YouTube. There will be more pro player content as well. I upload some articles there recently. You know, I talked about Luca Poi going back to the Prince Tech Stream Tour 100p. Corentin Mota, he went to the TFX1, the kind of power spin house of te Technifiber rackets. And I do meet interesting people when I'm around, talk to a Technifiber guy for a long time during the French Open, for example. So get some insights there. Um, you know, Tennis Warehouse Forum is always good. You know, there's a lot of like old discussions as well, but there's a lot of good nuggets of information. You can check them out. I'm very thankful for all of you that kind of send, you know, observations, uh, something you've seen, uh, something you know over Instagram. Big thanks to all of you who do that. Sometimes I don't have time to say thanks or, or reply. You know, there's loads and loads and loads of messages every day. Uh, but I really uh, appreciate all of you. Some specs I've seen, for example, that give you an idea of how different pro player specs are. Tiago Wild plays with a very heavy Wilson Blade Pro, Wilson H22. 
uh, very heavy is like 360 swing weight high weight just a very heavy stick creates a heavy ball but will be a lot to swings but this guy is very good he beat Medvedev in the first round of the French Open but he has more more steps to take and then you have a guy like uh, Van de Sanchul for example who uses a pure arrow 2016 I think it is if it's not the 2019 but it's one of those two models and it's relatively light it's like 330 swing weight strong so that means that it can be played by guys like you and me uh, 330 swing weight i think is the kind of the pros can go above that but for us rec players i think it's generally a good idea to stay below we have the rafa origin which is 370 and it's fun to use and i can play some good tennis with it myself but if i would take it into a tournament at some point it's gonna <laughs> gonna go you know poorly for me i think because it's too much to swing and I'm not Rafa so but it just shows how different pro player specs are today I want to talk about choosing a racket the whole racket thing um, there's so much out there there's so many good brands there's so many good products out there so I wanted to kind of discuss that a little bit give you some ideas and tips that I've been you know going through over the years I have a table here that I can't show you because I'm one guy with a tripod uh, about full of rackets and, and that's my my whole apartment pretty much is full of rackets you know I've got them demo sent I bought I sold I traded over the years so there's loads of things I have some very nice uh, items in the so-called collection although I, I don't see myself as a collector but for example a personal Novak has his name on the racket yeah hard to find obviously although he seems to be giving away rackets quite quite easily so I wanted to talk about different types of rackets for different types of players and how you choose a racket because I made one of these videos most of my older videos, they have pretty so-so sound. Uh, I was sitting in an office with like just stone and glass. I've gotten many tips on the channel over the years on how to work better with sound, but you know, sound panels and stuff, maybe you have to sacrifice a bedroom uh, to make a really like a YouTube studio. I haven't done that yet, as you notice, but uh, you, you know, might do that in the future. And I'm trying to do my videos a little bit out and about with voiceover so there's a little bit more action uh, and and you know more to look at now you only look at me which is boring but that's how it is so different rackets how do you choose a racket what do you where do you start and that's a lot of questions I get I get so many questions every day and you have to start with who you are as a person always what's your level what's your kind of physicality are you a big strong guy or are you more slender person you know you're not can't swing such a heavy racket you kind of feel that after testing a bit so if you have a coach you can always ask them uh, or a friend or a fellow tennis nerd that tests rackets all the time they might be able to help you so there's ways to get an idea of where you should be but if you're quite new to tennis you should definitely go light large head size go for something forgiving and we talk about forgiving we don't talk about like a Novak racket which his personal frame is 95 square inches that used to be a very normal head size going 15 20 years back there's still rackets around especially on the pro tour a lot of pros play with the smaller head sizes but for most recreational players it's too much uh, of a demanding you know racket to use because you don't have a lot of sweet spot to deal with the string bed is pretty firm because the you know this is a very dense string pattern here it's 18 19 most of these historically are 18 20. So this is not the type of racket you should go for. You should go for something that's easy, whether it's 105 square, 110 square, 115 square racket. Don't get too obsessed about the specs. Uh, I had the discussion with Nikola Racic from Intuitive Tennis. He's also a common sense guy when it comes to rackets and I'm that too, despite all this craziness with the rackets. I know that for you to play your best tennis and for me to play my best tennis, you should really just get something that feels good, that plays pretty well and focus on your game and your footwork and improving your stroke. Uh, and playing a lot of matches. I mean, sometimes you get too obsessed with technique. Uh, my buddy Nils is in that period right now uh, where you get things too much about technique and then your whole game falls apart and you get frustrated uh, where it's better to maybe focus a little bit more on the strategy where you place the ball. If you have strokes enough to place the ball, think about how you can make more damage to your opponent and how you can make less errors, for example. Quick sponsor break. Big thanks to Fasielo Balls for sponsoring this video and several others on Tennis Nerd the YouTube channel of course and um, this product the singles playbook is very good it teaches you patterns of play how you can defeat different types of players I bought it before they asked to sponsor the channel I uh, really like the product I learned a lot from understanding different patterns counter punchers pushers generally uh, baseliners servant volleyers you have ideas here that you can utilize to defeat certain types of players and that can really help you build a better arsenal uh, for your game and each chapter here comes accompanied with a videos uh, but that's a tangent but that's the most important part but there's loads of different rackets 
control rackets, spin rackets, comfort rackets. And as a um, player, you know, who's new to tennis, you know, you should be mindful of tennis elbow, a typical problem that comes, whether it's golfers or tennis elbow, but the elbow, you use that a lot in the stroke. So a comfort racket like the Clash from Wilson, a Prokenix racket, for example, or a lighter racket with a lower flex rating is generally quite a good idea to go for. Uh, I have a Clash here as just an example, but you know, this is a racket, you won't see it on the Pro Tour. There's a reason for that. It has a bit of a trampoline in the string bed. So the strings move more than you ex expect, more than most other racket types. For example, an Ultra from Wilson uh, has a similar head size and everything, but this one just has a bit more string movement. So you feel the, the strings really move more, which is where the power comes from. But it's very flexible, so the racket bends on impact. According to Wilson, they have some technology that makes it bend optimally or less. Don't read too much into racket manufacturer jargon. You know, a lot of the rackets are made in the same way and have very, very minimal differences. This is more about finding something that feels good in the hand, uh, feels good on the swing, and um, is forgiving enough for your game. Uh, it gives you enough power so you get some free depth, some free height over the net is becoming more and more popular today because people don't, generally who are new to tennis, don't play with a lot, a lot of spin. They try to play more, you know, maybe they play a bit more a flat uh, until they learn the proper spin mechanics. I think uh, getting that little bit of extra lift on the ball with a more open pattern is a good idea. And um, the Clash is such an example, I just brought that out. This is a comfort racket, I would call it the comfort category. Wilson don't call it that because I don't think they'd sell anything, but I think in all honesty, that's what it is. There are other comfort rackets, Prokenix makes some, Prince have pretty comfortable rackets overall. And the string is very important, I cannot stress that enough. Once you have a racket that you feel comfortable with, dialing in the string is the next step because the string is at least half the racket. That's what I would say. What you see, Rafa swing now, he's injured, but generally he's, um, he's swinging something like this. This is the new Pure Era Rafa. This is the lighter one, 290 gram. Fits quite a lot of different types of players, uh, but generally it's for you who plays with more of a vertical spin, swing movement. And uh, for me, for example, the ball is going to sail a bit too much. I have more old school mechanics. What you see usually is that, you know, the racket you kind of grew up with that grooved your strokes is kind of where you're leaning towards because that's how I built my game with like a 6'1", 95, 95 square inch. So I tend to not want to go higher than 98 and not too crazy with the string pattern that it's the holes are so big that the ball really grabs and goes, goes high. But if you play with a lot of spin, uh, you're a junior that, that was taught tennis that way or you just have that natural uh, spin mechanic, I think a racket like this is a great way to go. So this is called a spin racket. They're usually yellow for some reason. There's Dunlop SX, there's Head Extreme. There's a bunch of different, stream, different spin rackets. And um, this one is all about kind of that vertical movement and getting a bit more lift on the ball. And uh, 290 gram, 300 gram, I think that suits a, a wide group of players. If you're new, I wouldn't go that high. Maybe I would go 280, 285. Uh, but generally, I think uh, this can suit a lot of players that are beginner to intermediate. There's also something called more power rackets. There's the Pure Drive from Babala, which is the most famous one. Uh, but there's also this one, which is gaining traction. Yonex as a brand, they're gaining a lot of traction for a good reason. Their quality control is very good, uh, meaning that the specifications that you buy the racket from are, are pretty consistent uh, compared to other brands. This is an issue in tennis. I talk about it many, many times that like you buy a racket, you expect a certain specification, but there's plus minus seven grams variance and plus minus 0 0.7 balance points variance. And all that variance can create two very different rackets. If the store you're buying from can offer some kind of matching service or give you the specifications before you buy the racket, that is recommended. You will save yourself some headache trying to customize the racket or trying to understand which racket you like and why. So uh, make sure you, you, you go for that if you're buying two rackets, which is I tend to recommend even for players that are new, have two rackets of the same. If you like the racket, just um, in case you break strings, you always have a backup. And it makes sense to have the same brand and model so you don't have to change your stroke and stuff that I do all the time. Easton 100, uh, very, very good frame. And uh, my friend Henrik has uh, made a switch and we're gonna talk about that in an upcoming podcast. So make sure to, to check that one out when that comes out. 
and this is a very good frame. I was close to switching to this. Sometimes the ball goes a bit much, you know, with my kind of game, uh, but on serve, on, you know, strokes, it's very powerful, as are like Dunlop FX, Bubble Pure Drive, as I mentioned, Wilson Ultra, these, these are all power rackets, and the color tends to be blue there. The difference between a power and a spin racket is that the power rackets usually have a little bit of a denser string bed. So for flatter shots, more through the court shots, uh, you get a little bit of uh, better control. Uh, while the, the, you know, the arrow kind of rackets, the spin rackets, they tend to want to go a bit higher. Uh, so that is really the difference. So you have E-Zone Yonex, V-Core Yonex, for example. V-Core Spin, E-Zone Power. Then we go to the vast middle of rackets, um, all court rackets, whatever you want to call them versatile rackets. Uh, I have different categories in my uh, the Road to the Rat Racket course, which I recommend you to check out if you want to know more about this topic and get some really clear recommendations based on level and style of play and so on. But for example, this is a, a vast category because you have rackets like the Speed, which is a bit bigger, Prince Extreme Tour, but you can also go down to a Radical, which is definitely a little bit more on the control side, but not quite a control racket where you get the prestigious and the pro staffs. So um, the Radical is uh, very much uh, a control racket, quite dense string pattern, still 16-19, but you can have the same mains and the same crosses of, of strings, but depending on how they drill the holes, uh, it depends on how, how dense the pattern is and how it's, it's you know, placed. Sometimes they're very open here, sometimes they're more evenly spaced. It depends a little bit on what you want from the racket, but that's uh, something to know. But the Radical is pretty much like a, a versatile frame, but it's not that easy to generate power. So you need to have, I would say, a pretty decent game to play with a, a racket like the Radical. Otherwise, I would go with a bigger head size at least to give you a bit more help. Because 98 has become kind of towards the smallest head size you see in the kind of club player market today. You can get down to the pro stuff, which is 97 and pretty much the same as this one. But that's a pretty demanding racket. So um, this one is a little bit lighter and generally what they call the people's racket, which I think is a pretty good name in this case because this racket appeals to quite a lot of, a lot of players. And just a tangent, because it's a tangent video, uh, I want to talk about how the radical evolved because this is a radical from, what is it, 15 years ago, uh, maybe more. It's the TI radical. And this used to be 95 square inches because head used to me measure it the other way around. So it was, they listed 98, but it was really 95. And uh, the easy way to, to show that is that it's, this is actually, actually bigger. Uh, so uh, this one is 98, true 98 square inches. This one is 95. And uh, these rad radicals used to have a string pattern uh, of 1820. So they were quite demanding rackets, but, but nice feel, good, good sensation when playing. The modern radical, is a bit more open, 1619, so you get a little bit more lift on the ball, and they're a bit stiffer for a bit more power. The, the older radicals were a bit more flexible and more about feel than, than the current radicals. And they used to have a bit more weight in the head because the, the weight was overall a little bit lower. Uh, this is kind of 300 grams, this was 295, but the ones you go lower in weight, you need to have the mass in the, the hoop. So um, it's, it's, it's within the same heritage, and it's still some kind of orange in them, but uh, this is definitely mo the modern radical and easier to use and get power with. And then we get to the, the kind of control, you know, there's a pro staff in my wardrobe somewhere. This is a prestige, which is as much control as you can get. Like the prestige is such a icon for control, but, uh, and it's due an update. So uh, wait a few months and you will, you will see. And uh, this one, I, you know, I really like this the tour. This is the, you know, one of the few remaining 95 screen trackets on the market that I still enjoy. But if you have a small head size, you need a higher swing weight to have any power, any kind of plow through, meaning where the, you know, the racket just kind of goes through the ball and doesn't really wobble. Uh, and here you have a high swing weight. So uh, small racket head, you need more weight. Bigger racket head, you can reduce the weight. That's generally the physics of tennis. And you know, you could argue that rackets haven't changed much in 20 years. I would say that's about 20 years. I think the you know the, when the Pure Drive, Pure Aero came out uh, with aerodynamic beams and and you know large head sizes and thicker beams, there were rackets that were had thick beams before that. But that generally you know took over a part of the market 
and since then there haven't been huge changes. They, what's more in modern rackets is the dampening, so there's more, you know, like stuff in the handle, whether it's called VDM tech from Yonex or just silicone in the handle that many pros use to add weight and get some dampening. Uh, but yeah, there's definitely more dampening. It could be foam filling, like in Technifiber rackets, they like to film, fill the racket with foam, for example. Um, but overall, this racket, for example, it feels very old school. It has oxetic technology, which is, you know, a way of, of the, working with the layup of the fibers uh, that I talked about in a previous video. But overall, you know, you could take this racket and, and maybe an older Wilson 6195 and you get somewhat of a similar response. You wouldn't say this racket is from the future and the other one is 20 years old. Not much has changed. They keep, you know, tweaking, moving, but tennis is still played in pretty much the same way. It's just much faster. So you need generally a little bit more help uh, on the ball. But uh, what pros do on a tennis court and what us mortals do on a tennis court are different things. So uh, you also have to keep that in mind. Like you, we're not sliding around on a hard court needing ultra durable shoes. Uh, we, we, need, we can play with different rackets than the pros, for example. So that's the control. We had the comfort, we had the power, we had the spin, and we have all the big gray area of the middle. And then every category have usually some different tweaks, lighter versions generally, but also sometimes slightly different head sizes in the same line. So for example, the Extreme, which is heads spin racket, they have an Extreme Tour which is one of my favorite rackets and it's a 98. It's still in the spin category, but thanks to the smaller head size, uh, it has a bit more control and slightly, obviously, obviously thinner beam. So the camera gave up just as I was about to talk about my racket choices and why they are as they are. I've uh, sacrificed many sets and games and uh, practice <laughs> sessions, matches, whatever, for testing rackets. This is what I do. It's become a job. It was a hobby. Now it's a job. And I take it pretty seriously, I would say. And uh, I have loads of rackets uh, over the years from trading, buying, selling, um, getting demos and so on. And, um, you know, I want to give it a proper test in different scenarios. And that I can recommend to you as well. Make sure when you demo rackets to also play them in competitive formats, whether it's just playing underhand points. But generally, I would, I would definitely recommend to also play some, some sets with them and, and against different players. Not only just one guy you play with or girl, just try to find different partners. To get a see what, what a different kind of, of shot back to you, how that makes you play and how, do you, how you feel when you get tight. That is also very important in tennis. You get, you get tight, the muscles you know, tense up. Uh, your feet don't really move as they should and um, the racket suddenly plays different. Don't overthink rackets, but these things can help you get to a point. And when you find a racket you like, it's about time to find a string that you like, you can repeat that, you test a few different strings, and then you hopefully get to one string. Uh, there's nothing perfect out there, there's no perfect racket, there's no perfect string, so you have to find a compromise. And generally, uh, that would I think it always helps to go for something that really helps your strength. Don't uh, go for a racket that kind of neutralizes your strength and, and helps a little bit of your weakness. I would rather go for the strength. I think you need your strengths when you play tennis. If you have a big serve, you have to go for a racket that gives you an even bigger serve. It's going to give you more points, generally. And same with the forehand. If you have a very good forehand, you should go for a racket that feels very comfortable on the forehand for you. I think those things are, are important to go for. So um, think about your strengths more than then your weaknesses, the weaknesses are usually weaknesses from a more technical point of view. So that's something you can work on on a more technical way, I would say. But you can also obviously see it as a way to go for a racket. It gives you a little bit of help on defense. I understand that too. First, I start to, to play with Wilson, but uh, I didn't find solution to, to play well on clay. With yeah. my, uh, not enough spin. Or... It was not about uh, the spin. It was more about the, 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 the pure power. Yeah. And, uh, with Babolat, I, uh, I was like more deep on the court, and for me it was good because uh, in defense I was able to defend without uh, putting too much energy. I played with so many different rackets the last couple of years in tournaments on the ITF Seniors Tour and other you know matches. There's a few constants, few different rackets that I tend to come back to. Uh, the main one is the Prestige MP from 2019, um, just you know about 1.5 gram or two grams here and two grams there, so 10 and two. And uh, to give a bit more of a, of a higher swing weight, a bit better stability, because it's a very flexible racket, doesn't give me a lot of power. I might not be the player that should actually play with this racket. I'm maybe too weak technically, but my results uh, have shown that I seem to be doing best with it. So 
Uh, very good racket, very nice feel. I really feel connected to it and when I hit my slice, drop shots, touch and so on. Uh, and volleys especially, so this is one of my favorite rackets. And it stays in the bag, so it's kind of my desert island racket, if you so will. But I've tried to go for more power. I even tried the Pure Aero 98, tried the Wilson Shift. And what happens when I go for more power is that I don't have enough natural spin in my swing, so I can't control the ball. And when you have a powerful racket, it helps to have more natural topspin on the, on the ball. If you play more flat, you need to think about a more control-oriented racket. Generally, that's my recommendation, at least when it comes to the string bed. So you don't want this kind of um, launch angle, which we talk about where the ball just goes like this. Avoid that if you play more flat. So I've been playing around with getting a bit more power. And uh, the Pure Aero 98 is a bit much for me. Ball tends to sail. I'm not Alcaraz, obviously. Uh, so these two work better for me, even this one, which is similar to the Pure Aero 98, but it's a bit more controlled. And I just love hitting one-handed backhands with this one, which I tend to not love overall, but um, it's a very good racket. And I must say, it's important sometimes to revisit rackets, because I gave this a lukewarm review. I like the MP, but I gave this a lukewarm review, the Extreme Tour, Oxetic version. I really felt like the ninth edition, which was the previous generation, was better. Uh, I have changed my mind a bit. I feel like this one is more solid. I don't know if I've tried the wrong string setup or something, but my feeling right now is that this one is better, has more stable feel, a bit more solid, which tend to be the case with Oxetic rackets over 360 plus technology, in my opinion. Uh, it didn't work as well for me with the Prestigious, except for the Prestige Tour, perhaps, but I, I feel like uh, that actually is a benefit. So sometimes you have to revisit rackets, and um, I do put a lot of effort, energy, and, and playing into my reviews. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I, I have to change my mind a little bit and uh, when I play with it more and more and more. So this one is one of my favorites. It's a bit too much power uh, generally, but when I play on clay and I get a bit tired in the legs and I need more help, I don't need to go maybe to a 100 screen racket. I can go to this slightly thicker beam and a little bit more lift with the more open pattern. But in the middle of these two rackets, the Prestige and the Extreme Tour is the new Radical MP. And as I said previously, the Radical has changed it used to be more demanding and modern radicals are a little bit more friendly. Uh, gives you a bit more power, a bit more spin with the 1619 over the old dense 1820. So this is a, a, a very good racket for me. Uh, it doesn't really have any amazing feel or anything. It just does things well and, um, and it's very balanced. So I, I really like this frame a lot, uh, but I haven't been convinced enough in my situation of always testing rackets to commit to this and just go for this racket but it, it's definitely a racket i can take into to any play really and and, and enjoy and I, I did when i did my my best tournaments you know I, i've been playing with this one so either the prestige or the radical has been my tournament choice but i i do tend to like this when i want a bit more power so three different rackets all 98 square inches 260 19 one bit more open and 118.20. And so they're, they're pretty easy to switch in between. They have the same grip shape, and I obviously the same grip size. Uh, so I can actually have them all in the bag and go in between them. Suddenly when you bring in different sensations, different grips, different everything, then the switching, unless you're a chronic racket switcher, such as I am, or Henrik, for example, or a bunch of you out there, then it became, becomes a little bit more complicated to, to make the switch. But in between these, I, I can just take it on the power level. And as you might know, head they have a CPI scale, uh, which I think is great. Uh, it's a great way of, of kind of giving you an idea of the power level. I don't always agree with it 100%, but I think it's a good one. And um, the CPI 100 is the lowest power level. That's the Prestige Mid, which I'm not sure is, is there anymore. And then you go to the 1000, which is like the power rackets, the really like beginner rackets where you get loads of help, oversized rackets and so on. And if we would look at the power level of my favorite rackets that I showed you here, um, this one has the same power as a Gravity Pro, which is also a good racket, but I just can't really get used to the head shape. Uh, so this is 200, it's as um, controlled as it gets almost. And then you get up a little bit to 400. And I have a little bit of an issue here with this being 400 as well. I think this should be 500 but the MP is 500. I really feel like this is more for 500 or 450 uh, because I think I get a bit more power than with this one. But you know, uh, this is not maybe perfect science, but uh, two 400 and one 200, for example. So maybe the radical MP should be 300. So as you can see and hear, 
there's so many head rackets and it, it you know makes your head spin <laughs> uh, and uh, that can make it difficult to choose but on the other hand you know this I can switch in between and it works pretty well uh, but in this craziness of racket testing you know um, I, I which you will see in the podcast with Henrik you know we stay with the rackets for three weeks and then you move move on but in my case it's been pretty consistent of late which I feel pretty happy about it comes to different strokes uh, volley touch um, shots and slice you can't beat this one it's so good serve I get not enough at all uh, I don't have the best serve so this does not help me that much same with the strokes in general like you know you don't put enough uh, you know hurt on the ball that's an interesting word but it's like if your opponent feels that the ball is, is easy to hit uh, that's going to hurt you in mat matches so you want like a racket that gives you a little bit of a more powerful ball uh, and and that's what happens with these two rackets especially the tour that gives me a bit more lift a bit more difficult of a shot for my opponent also more difficult for me to control so that's the balance but but here this one i feel like on serves and just in pure power terms uh, i get more and uh, and that's uh, that's that's helps especially like serves and, and like you want to go one two with the forehand and i probably hit my best one hander with this one as well uh, this one goes in the middle, so I feel like it can give me the best balance if I maybe had to only pick one This is the one I should go for Strings, I test a lot of strings. I just got like two, I got two sets of uh, an interesting new string called Restring um, To test uh, so so that's gonna go in one of these rackets and um, This is Link Store. I like that. This is a natural gut hybrid with Hawk and this is a hybrid of Head Hawk and Head Lynx Touch in the crosses. So yeah, I like the Lynx Touch, has a bit softer feel, uh, but on its own it's too mushy. But together with a, with a firmer string, it works really well. I, those are my three rackets that kind of go in, in the bag, with the Prestige being the constant. But I do like those other two rackets as well. Gives you a little bit of idea what I use and how I think about my current racket situation. And now I want to know what other videos you want to see in the future. Uh, what rackets do you want me to compare? I did a, a long post on TennisNerd.net where I compared rackets. So. Yeah, if you're curious about that, let me know. I've been rambling for a long time now, and I just want to say thanks for all your support. Please check out um, my other you know, channels. Please subscribe, because YouTube is a grind. And uh, big thanks to all of you who support and write nice messages. I really, really read them all, and I like when I see the positivity there, because that's how I try to be as a person as well. That's all for today. Have a nice day now, and don't forget to play some tennis.